good evening. Welcome back to Business Repair Shop. Uh, we got kind of a different video tonight. I'm trying to... Uh, I bumped that. I was after last night's video and trying to draw out... You know, you guys watched last night's video. Trying to figure out we're wiring up that tractor. Um, yeah, I brought up in the comments that you can't wire... You can only wire the way I wired it with an amp meter. Not with a volt meter or volt gauge, what do you call it? So I thought, while well, I was at work today, I thought, you know... Might be a good time to do a little bit of a, a new style video where it's like a um, kind of a discussion on why why certain things are called certain ways and what you want to use in your car, what you don't want to use, and what's okay to run a tractor and what you don't want to do. So tonight we're going to talk about voltmeter versus amp meter. Why sometimes you want this? And I don't have an I don't have a volt gauge here. We'll pretend this is a volt gauge. Also, it does do volts. Um, sometimes you want an amp meter. Sometimes you want a volt meter. So let's first talk. We'll start this off. We're going to discuss what the difference aesthetically is. So I kind of drew up a very simple diagram. You have your alternator, alternator, voltmeter. So basically, if you were, um, if you had a battery and you wanted to see a voltmeter is going to test how many volts are on the system battery wise. And so it's going to take, basically, you're going to go from a positive to a negative and it's going to see how much voltage is across there. Um, there's a lot more science to how that all works, but basically so you could take a voltmeter Go up to a battery cut across it and it would tell you hopefully it's got 12 volts with the 12 volt battery 24 volt battery 24 volts all that stuff now because what it does is it just It's got a little gauge depending on how much voltage is there the gauge corresponds to that number and then it grounds on the other side of that now So that's how you can read reading with a voltmeter. So that's why like you got a good got a tool like this Turn it on. I'm gonna tell you volts. Actually, I'll go up to this battery. Oh, I got that here. We'll uh, see 13.6. I don't know if you can see that, but it's because that is currently sitting on a charger. And we could have also known that because this charger says 13.7, so it's on a trickle charger. So now, so it's a voltmeter. So basically, the volts tells how many volts are in it. Um, but for those that all know, um, volts is, I'm trying to layman's term this, and, you know, is the amount of, uh, let's, you know, the amount of pixels, and then amps is the power behind those pixels. So it's, that's probably not the most technical way to say it, but we'll say it for this, for this demonstration, um, for just simplicity. An amp meter, if you had an amp meter, like I got right here. And if you put this and you put wires on that and you went across the battery, that'd be a dead short. And you're going to see a lot of amps because it's going to it's going to probably melt those wires. Because what an amp meter does is it goes directly in line of the load. See how your positive comes off there, goes to your amp meter here, and then right to your right to your off your 12 volts. So when you're charging, it's this side. When it's discharging, it's on this side. So that's the main difference. Is a voltmeter? It sits outside of the circuit. It piggybacks it. An amp meter sits in the circuit. So why, explaining all that, what makes, why are, why are certain times you want a voltmeter and certain times you want an amp meter? Amp meter and a tractor is great because it's, everything's close together. You know, you got your battery, a lot of times your battery's sitting, um, and you can see how much of a load, an amp is going to tell you how much of a load you're actually trying to, your alternator's putting out. Because you want your alternator is going to be putting out voltage. It's also putting on amperage, putting out a load, and you want to see that, you know, so you want to see that on the positive side. If it's discharging, but an amp meter, the nice part is you can see how much of an amp, how many amps you're actually pulling. You can see, you know, like if you have an amp meter on a tractor, you can see when you're pulling more, putting more of a load on, put turn your lights on, it's going to kick it up more, and then you can kind of see what number you're at. A voltmeter, you're just going to see how much volts is, and so you're going to see like an alternator. It's got to put out. See so, yeah, how that's at 13.8, even if it's a 12-volt battery. Well, the battery is actually 12.6, and it's got to be one higher, one voltage higher for it to charge. That's why it's sitting at that. So with the voltmeter, you're just going to see what the actual voltage is. Now, as, as more of a load, if there's more of a load on this alternator than it can put out, it's going to start to, you'll see that number start to climb down, but you should see it come back up. So why, what do you want to have on your application? Now, it depends. Um, cars used to come with amp meters that were in in the dash, like old Chrysler products. They were an amp meter, 
um, most newer vehicles are going to have volt meters. And the problem with that is you're running, this is a high current line. You know, it can be pulling 30 to 40 amps through that wiring that you're running through your dash. So it can cause a lot of, a lot of wiring problems running your amp meter. So that's why they went to the volt meter where it actually, you, you can just run, you can tap into anything. You can tap into anything that's B plus and run that to ground. And you're going to get a, a reading that you can, you can then see if your charging system is working versus having to run heavy wires. In a tractor, it's nice because A, these are simpler to wire up. You can kind of have a, more, a little more of an idea what's actually, what kind of a load, because you can see on here like, okay, I'm, I got like five amps of a load, but sometimes, you know, if you're driving along and you don't have your headlights on and that thing pegs out positive, it's like got a big load on and starts to discharge. You can see like, I got a short somewhere, something electrically is going wrong um, with, with, with an amp meter. So that's why in tractors it doesn't matter because usually the battery is like right next, pretty darn close to where the amp meter is. Like on the Olivers, it's literally right behind it. So it's not that bad to run a higher amperage wire over through this setup versus running that. So if you're running it far away, like if you've maybe you've relocated your battery, um, like you're, let's say you're a pulling tractor and you got your battery sitting on the front. You probably don't care about your amp meter then you can probably just run a volt meter or volt gauge because it's a lot easier than trying to run another high amperage wire all the way back to your dash then running it all the way back and that's a whole lot of extra wire it's going to get hot so so yeah so just remember volt gauge parallel to the circuit or piggybacking the circuit we'll say so it basically it sits outside of the circuit and checks it an amp meter is in the circuit and that's why on gauges that turn us off like this particular unit here when you want to check for amps it's a fuse setup because you're actually going in line with it so you want to kind of know what you have and it's a different plug-in so you can't accidentally when you plug this thing into amp you'll actually it, it you can it will you'll know what you're doing versus going onto a live circuit because you can easily pop your little fuse you got a 500 milliamp and then a 10 amp on this particular unit so that's a little bit of a discussion of what you're thinking about. Um, like I said, both do the same, basically the same job. One just tells you amps, one just tells you volts. Um, it just matters how you wire it up. So if you kind of watch that video from last night, depending on what your tractor has or what vehicle you're trying to wire that in, take notice of if it's 12, if it's a volt, volt gauge, you can't, you have to wire it differently. So just, you basically do all that other wiring and leave that out of it. If it's this kind of a gate, if it's an amp gauge, you want to make sure you're wiring it in the circuit so you actually tell when it's charging. So, I don't know. If you guys like this kind of video, it's kind of a quick, um, faster kind of explaining things, maybe, sort of, um, without doing too much science. So, let me know in the comments. If you don't like this kind of stuff, well, maybe I won't do this tough stuff much more often. I was going to talk about um, some other wiring stuff that I've done on tractors to make... Uh, like on the farm all where I have three lights that run off of one switch. And if you put the switch up, the front two lights come on. If you put the switch down, all three lights come on. And how you run, th you have to use three relays to make that work. You basically have, um, it's a way to piggyback it so you can run one switch. It's, it's kind of a, a neat way to do it. Um, so I might talk about that in a video. Some other wiring things that I've done. I kind of like, as much as I hate, I say I hate wiring. I do like figuring it all out. It's kind of fun to me for, for me, figuring out how to do things a little bit differently. So, yeah, so here's your voltmeter, amp meter. Like I said, most tractors come with an amp meter. If you don't know um, what your car has in it, maybe it doesn't say. Sometimes, you know, sometimes cars don't say what's on them. If it's like a plus and a negative and the thing's in the middle, it's an amp meter. If the thing sits all the way down, because also, I didn't show this, and you want to have this. You want this after your ignition switch draw your ignition switch in here key okay. because otherwise that will oh that, that will drain down your battery not much it doesn't take much to run that gauge it doesn't take take much power for it to move that needle but it does take power it does take electricity for that needle to move over so you want to make sure this is after the switch this doesn't matter it can be right in line because it doesn't cause it there's no load on this one it's at zero and remember if you're wiring in um electricity electrical stuff and it's an amp gauge you know you have to remember don't don't put anything on ground on this unless it's a well yeah um don't put anything on ground on one of these because you will you'll fry it and you'll probably melt some wires and it'll be a bad time so
this is actually off that 60 I pulled off, so I think it still worked. So, all right, we'll uh, we'll do a, we'll do a, I'll show you something else in here, else in the garage real quick, and I'll, I'll bring you back. Hey, it's Kyle from the future to interrupt this video to tell me how I was an idiot. Also, another advantage with the voltmeter is not only can you run a smaller cable to it, so in the big scheme of things, it's technically lighter. Um, you also will always know how your battery is. Like, if you go key on with a voltmeter, it'll tell you. It's just like turning on this. It'll tell you how many volts you have when you go key on. You go key on with an amp meter, and it just sits there. <laughs> so... This is nice if you know you don't you want to you can tell your condition of your battery how much voltage you have in your battery. This is gonna tell you anything because this is just telling you how much amperage is either coming out of your battery or going into your battery. This is actually telling you how many volts your battery is or your battery is getting. So I didn't explain that that well during the video, and I was editing it and watching it back and realizing that's what I think I was trying to say. So yeah, so remember that'll tell you. How much is in it? This just tells you how much the loads on it. So, I'll uh, I'll let you get back to the rest of the video right here. So I had somebody ask me. Um, some people were asked why I did go with the three wire on the super. It's because this is the exact same uh, alternator on the M, which matches the same alternator that's on the seven. Both seventies have the same style. So I went with that because now if I wanted to have an extra one or one alternator, I mean, there's some belt pulley size difference. Like, that's got a way bigger belt than what um, this one has on it, which that's something, too, on, on alternator, something to think about. Uh, this alternator might not work that well because it's got such a big pulley, so it's going to be spinning slower. Uh, you want to have, in order for the alternator to start working, it's got to spin a certain RPM no matter what. So you want to have it... Like it's, I'm trying to think. I was reading an article, basically at like three or four thousand RPM of this unit um, is when it starts charging. The maximum you want to have is eighteen thousand RPM out of an alternator. Above that, it starts to get crazy. So in tractor world, you're never gonna worry about. We're so we're so low, so low RPM. It doesn't matter. But if you start putting like on a hot rod, you know you got you got a dirt track car that spends eight thousand RPM. You got to start thinking about your pulley ratio because one, you don't want to have too much power. This thing's gonna take it takes horsepower to run this. Everything that is off this, everything that turns with that crankshaft uses horsepower. So you want to have the right diameter so it's spinning to charge, but not overly charging or over too fast. So something else to think about is in the tractor side, and you're not really gonna to have to worry about that. But um sometimes in the uh in like the dirt track world, I know that's something to think about. Or like the hot rod world. So think about your ratios. Um, it's pretty easy to mix, but yeah, like I said, they're all, so now all three are exactly the same. So this one and the M have the same uh, pulley. So if I ever had to change that one on the 70, I'll get one like this and get a smaller belt for it. So, all right, well, I'm going to finish this one up with that. Um, let me know what you guys think. Like I said, I'm just trying to, trying to try some different content, see what, uh, you guys want to see a scary number? Um, try something. Uh, just try something a little different. Sorry, I got distracted. Look, I think it's a ninety-two hundred hours. Ninety, yeah, ninety-two sixty-six hour meter on this thing. I think it works. So yeah, but yeah, I've, you know, trying something a little different. You know, if you got any other weird questions, um, let me know in the comments. Maybe I can try and help you figure it out, or we'll find out from there. Oh, also, um. I should have said this earlier in the video. Check out, I'll put a link, Timothy Flegel. He did the uh, the Russian Doll Challenge last night on his video. So go check out his channel. Um, I know I gave him a shout out pretty early on. I know a lot of guys have, have come over here from there or have crossed, you know, kind of, you know, we've kind of crossed around with our, with our subscribers. But check it out. He just got done doing, um, working on Alex Chalmers B. So that's been kind of fun to watch as they done a pretty have done a pretty quick re rebuild on that. I'll be pulling against him uh, next summer, so maybe you won't see everything I'm going to do this. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm going to show everything I do on this. It's not like I'm really – this thing is stock. Like, people ask me. I'm like, no, it's really stock in there. But, um, but, yeah, so check out his channel. Throw a link in the description. But uh, y'all have a great Tuesday night. We'll see. I probably won't have a video out till probably Friday because now my week starts to get kind of busy. So until then, I'm going to start thinking about this steering problem here, and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. But uh, make sure you get a like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.